Hello everyone, it's me and Steve Dojo here, back some more Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And quickly, I just wanted to talk about the gameplay of Sparking Zero compared to the gameplay of Dragon Ball Universe 2. Because both of these games play very differently, despite both being 3D arena fighters. Um, and, you know, Tank actually kind of started the whole formula of how Dragon Ball games would play from now on. Of course, not every Dragon Ball game does it perfectly. Xenoverse is a good example of a very sub-genre kind of Tank Chi game. You know, the lock-on system, the way the camera is positioned, the way the moves show up on the screen, etc, etc. But I would really want to talk about how Xenoverse 2 plays differently to Sparking Zero or the Tenkaichi series, since we can only play the other Tenkaichi games. Sparking Zero is not out right now. And one of the biggest things I want to talk about in the game is obviously uh, the lack of key cancels in Sparking Zero. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, I guess I'll use the Tenkaichi gameplay as an example. I'll probably put some, like, Red Potaro or Z difficulty enemy gameplay in the, in the background. But um, consider the AI, the max difficulty AI for the game, to be the strongest things you'll probably find in the game, other than maybe a, a complete god sweat of Tenkaichi. I can't imagine anything being harder to fight than a Z difficulty AI in the game, though, since they do just counter everything and read all your inputs and never lose clashes, etc., etc. But um, when you consider the higher levels of Tenkaichi, even the lower levels of Tenkaichi, you can see that there's still a lot of combo variety being put into the uh, into the gameplay. And I should say, Tenkaichi, I believe, is also like Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, where there's no damage drop-off per se, but combos can end because you do run out of options as you keep going further and further into the combo. Or whereas in Xenoverse 2, combos can just choose to not end. Um, whether someone is stamina broken or not, you can just do like uh, like two health bars right there's no damage drop off and there's no ends to the combo it's not like uh, dragon ball fighters per se where if you drag out the combo not only does the damage get lower the window of your next attack gets shorter and shorter until it's literally impossible to continue a combo right so there's a punishment to starting uh to starting um uh like attacks i guess attack strings in dragon ball fighters with really weak moves um, just because they're really quick and really fast because you end up doing really low damage every time you do get your enemy and then it's not an infinite combo either. Same thing with the Tenkaichi series. If you start your combo, it could be whether, whether it's a weak move or a strong move. I do believe there is no damage drop off to the attacks. It's just that you run out of options to do. Um, Sparking Zero Footage is a very good example of that. Vegeta has an, an option or I guess I'll call it a special finisher, right? A combo extender called Flying Kick. It was called Flying Kick in the Tenkaichi series. And if this was done twice in the same combo, the combo would just break. However, in Sparking Zero, it does seem like you could combo ultimate attacks after a broken combo. So maybe, maybe you can just break a combo in Sparking Zero, but so long as you have an ultimate attack or something that like can quickly come in, like maybe certain super attacks, right? It can fix the uh, it can fix the uh, issue. Tenkaichi does not have this either. I'll probably put some footage on the screen where I do the exact same combo that Vegeta does, and the final flash just doesn't connect at the end. Um, so yeah, that <laughs> but Xenoverse, Xenoverse is a very different beast. In Xenoverse, you can hit someone with. Uh, let's see. You can hit someone with, like, three YXYs in the same combo. I'm saying three because I don't think you could survive more than that. Um, you can get someone with, like, three, like, heavy, like, heavy combos. And the combo damage will not get any less, as well as the fact that the combo will never break or end. Um, a good example is that Xenoverse is plagued by cancels, whether they're key cancels or mash cancels, like XY or square triangle, square triangle... You know, whether it's one of those two combos, Xenoverse 2 is plagued by it heavy. It's not even something that you run into only in, the, in like, the very, like, back ends of, like, Xenoverse 2 ranks, right? You could literally buy the game right now, like, be a new player, buy the game right now, turn it on, go online, and just get cheesed by someone spamming cancels. Uh, the reason why cancels are an issue, and I'll get to that later, is due to the fact that they cost literally no resource whatsoever, right? They cost no resource, they're extremely free, they're extremely easy, it's just mindless gameplay, you know? Um, something that the Tenkaichi series actually does avoid by putting a resource on even something as simple as dodging moves. And then even when dodging is only rewarded by timed mechanics or by pressing certain button inputs to respond to certain actions. Whereas in Xenoverse, if you want to avoid being punished, you can just press the circle button or the B button on your PlayStation and Xbox controllers respectively and then press dash immediately after and you're free. That's it. That's all the effort it took to avoid literally every single interaction in the game. But one thing I wanted to say about the uh, cancels and how they affect the game it's because Xenoverse 2 has no damage drop-off. And I think Xenoverse 2 honestly should have damage drop-off because it would really stop this kind of like really annoying toxic gameplay we see, right? With uh, Xenoverse 2 players. But it should, it should honestly have damage drop-off for the fact that if people start combos with XY or a key cancel, their damage should sink immediately because then it would encourage actually not spamming it because then you'd have to go, well, I need to damage this guy eventually because I'm doing less damage because I'm just spamming the safe get out of jail free move every time just so I can secure an easy combo, right? 
In other games, having this many free options uh, tied behind one button press or two button presses if you're doing... Uh, actually, I guess they're both two button presses, right? Key cancel is just two. I mean, it's really just one because you always dash at the end of every animation in Xenoverse 2 anyway. So it's just one button press. Yeah, one button press literally gets you out of jail, stuns the enemy for a very long amount of time. To you have more than enough time to literally just like let the drool fall from your mouth and go, oh, I guess I can attack the guy now because I just saw him get stunned. Like, it's not like a reaction-based thing. You just spam it, and when the enemy gets hit, you go, nice. In fact, you know, don't even wait for them to get hit. Just keep spamming it, and you'll be fine. Um, you couldn't do that in Tenkaichi, and I guess you can kind of do that in fighters, but it requires having assists, which do have a cooldown. Man, imagine if XYs and key counts had cooldown in Xenoverse 2. The game would be so much more enjoyable. But, um, yeah, you can really only get away with, like, brainlessly spamming someone with literally no options. Um, in fighters, uh, on a cooldown, and in Tenkaichi, you really just can't. Um, shooting key blasts in in uh, tank in the Tenkaichi series, at least, did actually take part of your key bar. And even then, key blasts only actually stun someone long enough for a combo when you are right next to them. If you are right next to someone shooting a key blast, only then does it stun long enough for a combo. And even then, most of the time, depending on uh, how fast the character attacks or how fast the character defends, or even the type of key blast, the combo might not be possible there. Another way, or I guess the easier way to ensure that your combo actually does happen is that in Tenkaichi, when you're dashing towards someone, you could shoot key blasts mid dash, and doing that would make you recover faster from the key blast animation so long as the enemy gets hit. If the enemy does not get hit, you are stuck firing those key blasts and you are open for damage. In Xenoverse 2, if you shoot a key blast, you can either wait for it to hit your enemy or wait for it to not hit the enemy and still go in and be completely fine because you recover immediately, it's gonna stun the enemy, and even if it doesn't, if the enemy tries to block it, they get stunned. Oh, that's a really annoying part, but we'll get to that later. If the enemy tries to block it, they'll be uh, stunned for even more time than if they actually just got hit by the move, meaning that you can then just grab them afterwards and grab Zinzi Universe 2 are very, very easy. So, it's a horrible situation, but I guess before I forget, I will talk about the key blast reflect mechanic. In Dragon Ball uh, Fighters, the key blast reflect mechanic is very quick. You would just hit the, uh, the, I guess, the reflect button, the parry button, um, which you usually pushes people back, but against Key Blast, it sends them all over the screen. And I do believe it gives you frame advantage still, since you are in, you know, the reflect animation. And in the uh, Tenkaichi series, you reflect Key Blast um, to obviously, you know, stop them from holding you down because you don't want a scenario where someone dashes up to you, uses Key Blast, holds you down, and then puts you in a block string or whatever combo, uh, you know, they feel like, or whatever combo they can get away with at the current moment. So you'd reflect Key Blast to do that. And even if you did timed Key Blast Reflex, I think it's only against Charge Key Blast. But if you do timed Key Blast Reflex, you can actually bounce the Key Blast right back in the person's direction. And obviously, it would then become a, a projector that can hit them and do damage to them. Which I think is very, very interesting. And obviously, a cool way that Key Blast, you know, work in the anime too. Um, now, Xenoverse's folly with this is that there are the... the <sighs> when you reflect Key Blast in Xenoverse 2, you are actually, I do believe you are stunned for almost a similar amount of time than if you just got hit by the Key Blast. Um, so there's no reason to reflect Key Blast in Xenoverse 2. Xenoverse 2 is also so chock full of iframes that when you reflect your Key Blast, your enemy is most likely not going to get hit by it. Because he already knows that you are going to be stuck in an animation whether you reflect it or not. So he's just going to, you know, dash in, have iframes the whole time he's dashing in, and then hit you. Um, the other option is that... Key Blast cancels in Xenoverse 2 are just so broken in general. Even if someone is not actually in the path of a Key Blast, they might still get stuck in a Reflect animation, which means that they might as well just get hit by the Key Blast, even though they did avoid it. Um, which is uh, a little annoying, you could say. But uh, obviously, again, uh, the, uh, another, another issue with Xenoverse 2's core mechanics in general. Um, which reminds me that there is like a giant thread on like Reddit or something about uh, key cancels, key stuns, and the meta on Xenoverse 2. I don't want to go over it in this video. Maybe I'll give it its own video if you guys want me to. But it, uh, to, to put it short, it's really just, hey, key cancels are fair because I want to win at the video game more. And that's pretty much it. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it. That's just kind of what it is. Like, um, uh, I, I don't think I see any other community really defend, like, key cancels and, uh, I guess, X, Y, or square triangle cancels like the Xenoverse 2 community does. I get, obviously, that you want to, you know, you want to say it's in the game, so it's fair and balanced. Uh, no, another argument I love to bring up a lot is that they spent money on the game. But the issue is that other people spent money on the game, and you not being good at the game is not their problem. They shouldn't have to suffer because you suck so bad you can't play about a very obvious exploit. Um, so, yes, doesn't matter if you say you paid your money for the game, other people paid their money for the game. And the needs of the many do outweigh the needs of the one, which is you. So, that's that's really not the people's problem. Just please be better at the game. Don't rely on an exploit to win. It's very easy to do. You see me do it in all of my videos. So, it's, it, you, you can play Xenoverse 2 like a normal person. It, it, it's not hard. 
Again, these are issues that the Tenkaichi series didn't have to suffer with. Even amongst the best characters' kits, it actually requires a lot of commitment. A good example is Metacola and Yajirobe's regeneration or mechanics that help them get health back requires a ton of blast off, meaning you need to keep the character alive and do well in a fight long enough to get that much blast off to then heal with Yajirobe's sensor beans or rebirth with Metacola's Big Getty Star, you know, synchronization. Mechanics like that are super cool. Again, oh, it's just, it, it's, it's, ugh. I hate to glaze, but it's beautiful. The Tenkaichi series really knew how to make a game series that was not only fun and very immersive and like really, really puts you in the seat of like the Dragon Ball world. But it's also just a, a, a relatively balanced game to play. Obviously, yeah, there's there's a few issues with the Tenkaichi series, right? Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan attacks nightmarishly quick. Kid Buu used to be the final boss at the time of those games coming out because, you know, Dragon Ball Z series. So he's really OP. Same thing with Omega Shenron because he's the final boss of Dragon Ball GT. Same thing with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta. But a few characters having slightly faster attack animations or slightly better super attacks is nowhere near as game-breaking as people just being entirely invincible the entire match and just avoiding damage through lag or some other abusive exploit then having some sort of really cheap move that forces you to use up all of your stamina and then just kills you, right? Could you imagine if you were playing Tenkaichi Let's say, for example, in the gameplay showcase, uh, Blue Goku blo versus uh, Blue Vegeta, right? Goku versus Vegeta. Imagine if in that showcase, they shot Key Blast cancels at each other every single time they wanted to attack. And every time they did attack, they only did the same two attack animations to put the enemy in a knockback or a knock-up situation so then they could actually do a combo. And the only reason why they were spamming those as well so they can get out of jail for free in case if their initial attack didn't work. So they just keep doing it on repeat over and over. Key cancel plus square triangle, key cancel plus X, Y, just that on repeat. And then when they do finally get their enemy, all they do is like a knockback into like flash strike or Kamehameha times 10 or something really, really lame like that. Is that, is that what you want to see? Is that, is that the Dragon Ball game you want? I don't think that's the Dragon Ball game anyone wants. I think people want a Dragon Ball game that's actually fun and makes you feel like you're playing a Dragon Ball game, not a, like an exhaustion simulator. Um, I, uh, you know, I think this is a good place to end the video. I, I think I've got all my points across as best as I could. It's, uh, again, Xenoverse 2 is just one of those games where it's kind of suffered due to the course of time. It, it can, I want to say it can easily make a bounce back, but that's entirely dependent on, deve on the developers. All Xenoverse 2 needs is really a good netcode or just one person coming in and going, oh, this mechanic doesn't jive well with the rest of the game and just taking it out. And the game would literally have players coming back to it. I'm not kidding. Uh, because a lot of people's issue with Xenoverse is especially the PvP, how unbalanced it is, how, how demanding it is of you. you. You have to be like really good just to be someone who is not on your level at all because they're they're just abusing exploits up the up the butt you know so so even if you even if you do believe you're actually good at the game you're gonna suffer for it if you're not using the same uh cheese mechanics as everyone else and that sucks because no one wants a game dominated by moldy stinky cheese that's why it's so hard to find player matches on dragon ball's university because they're so boring but yeah that'll be it i think this is a good place to end the video and i have yapped on long enough so that'll be it. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the novels again, please leave a like in the video. Don't forget to subscribe. It greatly really supports the channel. And leave a comment down below as to what you'd like to see next. Love you all. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all next time. Take care and uh, peace.